Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. In today's game, up on the tabletop is Tilt and Shout by Big Potato Games. This is a game that plays two or more players, meaning you can play as many players as you want as long as you form two teams. Ten and up, so as long as you can shout out words to categories, you're good. And it takes roughly about, I don't know, ten to an hour to play. It just really depends on how well you are with answering category questions. And once you've designated teams, you're just simply going to draw a card. Then that team who drew the card will start by answering the card with a word. In this case, it's vegetables. So they'll be like, oh, I'm going to choose asparagus. The next team will choose, oh no, a vegetable, broccoli. And then the next team will go and go, oh, a tomato. And from there, they said tomato. Tomato is actually a fruit. So the other team can challenge them. And if the uh, answer to the card that they chose was incorrect, then this team will win the round. Whenever you win a round, you'll move this thing back and forth, and basically at a certain point the game will end, and whoever has pushed their thing all the way to the farthest edge and had the ball drop in their favor is the winner of the game. We'll talk about the setup, the basics of how to play, which you almost already know, and then we'll cover my review. So, a short video. Tilt and Shout is quite a simple game to set up. Basically, you're going to need to set up the board, and that's pretty much it. It's going to come with some stickers that you're going to add for the winning zones of both yellow and pink, as well as, of course, sticking this little gondola, this little yellow, the little yellow piece of plastic directly in the middle. There's additional stickers that you can use as well. Take the metallic balls or metal balls out of the little container in the box and place them in these zones. These are going to be used to be placed inside this mechanism here. There's also going to be a deck of cards. Take those out, shuffle them, and then make three stacks so that you can have a wide variety of different categories to choose from when it's your turn. Okay, that, that's set up. So playing the game is as simple as setting it up. And how it works is now that you've got two teams, and this is a case of two and two, I'm going to be the team who starts, and I'm going to choose me to begin the game. I'm going to actually take one of these three category cards, and each of the cards has a visual representation of what the category is likely going to be. In this case, they have a zombie hand with a little moon. I'm good with zombies and those type of things, so I'll flip this card over. Ah, it's scary movies, but no sequels. Okay, so that's the category. I need to name a scary movie and not a sequel of that movie. So I'll start by taking this ball here and placing it in as soon as I have an answer, which I do. I'll place this in and begin. Scream. Now the ball is going to rotate going left. The other team can go, ah, Dawn of the Dead. And now the ball rotates to the other side. And the next team can go, ah, The Thing, John Carpenter. In which case the ball will keep rotating. And it's gonna keep going like that as players attempt to guess uh, a non-sequel scary movie. And the moment the ball reaches one of these winning zones, the team who's on that side of the winning zone is the winner of the round. You wanna play the board to be kind of facing each team. So I would be on this side and the other team would be on this side. That way, whenever you guess the answer correctly, you push it, or whenever you have an answer to guess, you push this in. Pushing down this button here, or the tilt-a-whirl thing here, is going to lock your answer. So if I said something like Gone with the Wind and I push the button down, the other team can challenge. Anytime that a player a, guesses the category and you believe it to be incorrect, you can challenge them. You look it up or have an intense debate of some sort, and the team who is correct is accurately going to take the point. Whenever you take a point, you're actually going to go ahead and move a marker. Your marker, these are these little, um, I guess they're little like yellow plastic um, pillars. And you'll move it one closer to the winning zone area. Thusly, it makes the ball slower to roll whenever you push it. So there's going to be a farther uh, diagonal uh, towards the uh, losing team and a lower diagonal towards the winning team. And so you'll play from round to round, drawing a new card with the losing team, having them start with fairy tales and nursery rhymes, and then they'll choose and lock in an answer and push it down after putting a ball in, and the other team will rinse and repeat, keep going back and forth. And as you can see, this is the, this is the, uh, the beginning of the game, and this is what happens at the end. The ball is going to barely be rolling, giving the other team, who's in behind, kind of a leg up in this scenario. And that's basically the idea of the game. Trying to guess the categories, not guessing the same one previously stated, that's a loss. Not guessing the wrong answer, that's also a potential loss. If no one catches it though, you can still continue playing. Um, and attempting to get your ball or the ball to bounce and in roll into your side of the game board. It's a really simple category shouting type of party game that plays as many players really as you want, but Probably no more than six. After that, it starts getting too clogged at the table having to push this button down. Anyway, there you go. That's the game. Let's talk about it. Tilt and Shout is the perfect Big Potato game party game. This is one of those games where if I saw it, I would assume it's from Big Potato because they do lots of party games. 
Uh, this one probably plays like other games you've played before involving categories, and the difference between those games and this one is going to be the tilt and shout board here. Put, putting the little metal ball in the middle here and having the questions go back and forth as players attempt to answer the category questions while stopping it if they can. Um, this is a timed game, but it's timed in a unique way, and based on how far you're ahead, it will be timed kind of slower or, or faster, determining on how many rounds you've won, and it's going to eventually come to a close. Uh, these are each separate, it's not on the same track here, so eventually as you win more and more, your marker is going to go all the way to the end, and thusly, if it does happen to be this case, where you have two at the very end here, the ball's gonna be rolling quite slowly, but that's not always the case. As far as the categories go, there's quite a few of them in here. Uh, you have musical instruments, you have TV channels, things that are yellow, famous civilizations, items sold in a bakery, words that rhyme with duck, things that are green, uh, Chinese, Mexican, and Indian dishes, fruit, music genres, characters in Star Wars, and it continues to go. These are all very basic categories. It won't be like villains from Mega Man or uh, B-ranked B villains from Marvel. <laughs> You're actually gonna know all of these categories, uh, even somebody who's probably probably age 10, minus things like maybe scary movies and whatnot. It's pretty family-oriented, family-made, so that um, if there's a category that you know somebody at the table doesn't know at all, you want to make the game fun, you can just remove those cards for that specific group. There are a lot of cards, and of course, the a nice thing too is the icons on the back of the cards indicate like what type of category it is. So it'll give you a leg up. Maybe you're musically oriented, maybe you'll choose the saxophone. Oh look, it's musical instruments. Or the TV here. Oh look, it's TV channels. So you get the gist of it. Uh, quality of the game is nice. The cards work really well. They're the standard basic, uh, the standard big potato style cards. Uh, they are nice and thick. Uh, and they're easy to read, and they have iconography that works well for the specific categories. The tilt and shout is great. Moving it left and moving it right works simply, and pushing it down does have the ball rotate. Sadly, my table is not perfectly level. You know, I don't have perfect leveling like Rick and Morty, unfortunately, and because of that, the ball doesn't rotate. I actually have to use little things to, like, m m I kind of orientate this so that it is as level as humanly possible. I probably should buy some leg stands that kind of make this table a little flatter because there are a few games where I've noticed this is to be a problem. So if you have a not perfectly level table, then at certain points, if you, especially if you get to the end area where there's just a barely a slight diagonal tilt, it might roll slower on one side than the other. So that's my main negative for the game is just you have to have a perfectly level area or playing space. Otherwise, the game's not going to work very well and you have to kind of reorientate your table space. Otherwise, though, it's a great little party game. It's a pretty standard, straightforward name and guess the categories, lightning fast, timed game where you're pushing this thing down. It feels good to move it. It feels good to watch the ball go. There is the tension as you watch the ball when you're trying to think of a category, and it can stump you up, even if you're like the master of a certain category. Because of the intensity of having to watch the ball it makes you a little nervous, it is a way in which all players are going to be equally as anxiety ridden. I really, really enjoy Tilt and Shout. This is a solid game. It's a great party experience. It's one of those games I'm going to have my friends ask me to borrow for their party nights and game nights. So I'm going to give this a solid A+. If you don't like party games, though, if you don't like category games, uh, this is not going to be for you. It's, it is exactly as it is explained. Category card, answer the category, push the thing down, and try and get the ball to go into your space. More challenging as it progresses. There you go. That's Tilt and Shout. What do you think about it? Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Tilt and Shout by Big Potato Games. If you're interested in this game or party games in general, I suggest you take a look at the site, Big Potato Games. There's a link down below in the description. And if you're feeling frisky, if you've seen more than one of our videos here on the channel before, consider subscribing to the channel. Each subscribe that we get does greatly help and having 90% of our viewers not push it does break my heart a little. So if you can consider doing so, I'd really, really appreciate it. It's a way we keep going and keep making more videos. And if you're really into watching games as opposed to just watching reviews, we have a live stream every week on Sunday at 6 30 p.m. PST where we play one of the games that have come in that week or that have a review coming out that week or a game that's currently on Kickstarter so you can go ahead and see if it's something that you'd like to back or even buy. All right guys thank you so much for watching and as always I look forward to tilting and shouting with you next time.